I'm Pete Gruber. Welcome back to another Gruber Motor Company video. Today we're going to discuss why the President of the United States, when on the subject of electric vehicles, gets it so wrong. President Biden is getting a fair share of criticism over his recent praise for General Motors and crediting Detroit with the electric vehicle revolution while completely ignoring the real catalyst for this massive transportation disruption, a U.S.-based and born company, Tesla. The recent consistent public outcry blames the Biden administration for propagating lies motivated by protecting the United Auto Workers, who generously fund political campaigns, the big auto lobby, implying that our federal government is up for sale, biased, and panders to the highest bidder. If that was true, that would of course be criminal and a complete breach of the trust that our citizens place in elected officials entrusted with and selected to run our country. I'm gonna take a different approach. I have a hard time believing the people that we have voted into government are so blatantly corrupt, so easily manipulated. I also have a hard time believing that our president is foolish enough to knowingly disseminate false information, ignore facts, and assume that the American public is ignorant and will also ignore facts and buy whatever the federal government tells them is so. Instead, I'm going to place the blame on the Biden administration speechwriters and fact checkers, seemingly uninformed and ignoring reality. The same people who feed President Biden's teleprompters. You need to clean house, Joe, and you need to replace certain incompetent people on your staff that are turning you and your fine administration into a global laughingstock. Let's review some history. Tesla, hands down, has been leading the EV adoption charge since the release of the Tesla Roadster in 2008. General Motors actually had a chance to take this EV leadership position by releasing their first electric vehicle, the EV1, between 1996 and 1999. But they would only allow leasing and believed that electric cars occupied an unprofitable niche in the auto market. They ended up recalling almost all the EV1s and crushing them despite furious owners who would have preferred to buy them and continue driving them. Their push at that point into EVs went completely dormant. In the meantime, in July 2003, Martin Eberhardt, seeking an electric sports car capable of a range beyond 100 miles, incorporated Tesla Motors along with Mark Tarpening. Inspired by one of three electric sports cars called the T0, made with grant dollars by a company called AC Propulsion Systems in San Dimas, California. Since Tesla at that time was too small to build car bodies, a contract with Lotus supplying 2,400 empty sports car chassis, the Lotus Elise, to Tesla became the foundation for the first Tesla electric vehicle, which took the auto world by storm, outperforming many exotic sport cars of the day. The Detroit auto manufacturers, like GM and Ford, were still focused on mass-producing fossil fuel burners aware and confused by Tesla's emerging and eventually overwhelming undeniable success. By 2009, General Motors filed for bankruptcy, took taxpayer handouts into the billions, and went down in history at the time as the largest bankruptcy in U.S. history. It eventually reemerged, shedding a lot of debt. Although the current new GM EV goals are ambitious and make for great headlines, claiming to be fully electric by 2035 and 40% by 2030, they are off to a rocky start with 141,000 of their early Bolt EVs being recalled for battery fires and warnings to owners to park them outside the house until they can be recalled and repaired. Ford not to be outdone, also claims a goal of being 40% electric by 2030. It seems Detroit is full of good intentions, but Tesla is the only one really delivering EVs people demand and want to drive. At the same time, Tesla seems best positioned to eventually release an EV less expensive than an internal combustion engine car, and this has been seen as a next game-changing accelerator 
toward even more rapid EV adoption. Joe Biden has always had a strong relationship with the labor unions. Both GM and Ford were, and still are, UAW strongholds, and we all know what happened as labor unions grew more greedy, making labor costs unsustainable in the face of cheaper foreign competition, not shackled by an above average labor cost. Tesla has avoided union infiltration, which brings not only higher labor costs, but the inherent corruption that has plagued organized labor for many decades. So who is really leading the EV charge? A simple litmus test is whose EVs do you see on the road as you drive about town? For every 10 or 20 Teslas you see, you may see one of the other brands. Tesla's EV dominate the U.S. roadways. Who has the most EV infrastructure under construction? Tesla by far has the most production capacity planned or under construction and outpaces all the other brands combined. Who has released the most EV models? After the Tesla Roadster came the Model S sedan, the Model X SUV, the Model 3 sedan, and most currently the Model Y. And in the works are a large semi-truck, a cyber truck, and a game-changing supercar, the second generation Roadster, ready to outperform all exotic cars. What about service delivery? The other auto manufacturers are simply not going to be able to convert their existing service delivery system overnight. Working on an EV requires a much different skill set than repairing an internal combustion engine vehicle full of mechanical challenges. The conversion of service facilities, retraining of staff, are all big hurdles which Tesla clearly remains a leader in this category with global EV service centers and very specific trained staff. Tesla has also invested the most of any car manufacturer in a global EV charging infrastructure to support their vehicles and from all appearances, other vehicles in the future as well. The bottom line is to leave Tesla out of any EV development recognition is denying our country's greatest recent innovator transportation company. One who leads the EV world and whose designs are consistently emulated and copied setting the standards for all other EV manufacturers to follow. A new batch of speech writers and fact checkers on the Biden team will prevent any future embarrassments like this. I'm Pete Gruber. Thank you for joining us in another provocative video. Any comments you would like to leave, please do so down below and hit that subscribe button and that alert button if you want to see more content like this. Thank you.